Hello again fellow pilots. Today we're going to be learning how to take off at a pilot controlled airport or a non-towered airport using the GPS to fly over to a towered airport and where to find all of that information in flight sim. So the idea here is these videos will train you how to do it in the sim and then you can take this real uh, real experience and transfer it transfer it over into your real life flight training. Again, I'm a f real life flight instructor about 500 hours in the Skyhawk and I'm going to do my best to help you learn how to do this in the sim and then transfer it to real life. Here we are at Lansing Mun Municipal Airport, Kilo, India, Gulf, Quebec. I'm looking at the top of my Garmin 530 and as I zoom in on it by pushing the down button, you can see there it is, Kilo, India, Gulf, Quebec. Every airport or almost every airport in the United States begins with a K and that's how you can tell that they're in the um, in North America rather so let's see what we got here I always always recommend setting your radios before you start taking off so you can be uh, focused on flying and not focused on setting your radios first things first we got to get the weather so how do we figure out what the weather here is here at Lansing well you can use this big wheel here and roll it over to your nearest airports and sure enough there is our nearest airport and you can get a little information by getting the cursor and it clicking enter. And so this is going to tell me everything that they know here about Lansing Municipal Airport, just south of Chicago. So I'm going to use the small wheel to flip between the pages here. It doesn't look like they have a lot of information, but they do have the frequencies. So if I were going to do this in real life, I need to know the weather frequency, which is 119 or 27. I always like to put those ground frequencies on the COM2 on the bottom here. So 119, twist the small wheel, to 2 7. Alright, this in real life is my AWOS or my Automated Weather Observation Service. 119 or 2 7. Flip that up, and if I want to listen to it, I just push COM 2. So I should be hearing the weather right now. Sadly, this isn't modeled correctly in the sim. It's one of those differences between the sim and real life, but that's no problem. Alright, our destination today. Oh, by the way, you can clear everything that you do on this by holding the clear button. It will leave everything that you set, but it will bring you back to the main nav page. So if you get really lost in this, just hold the clear button for about two seconds. Today we're going to go direct to the nearest towered airport, which is Gulf Yankee Yankee. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And there it is. You can see Kilo Gulf Yankee Yankee. And you see how it's inside that blue line, that blue circle. That represents a class Delta or a towered airspace. For us to enter into that Delta airspace, you need to be talking to their tower. You need to have a dialogue, as they say. So let's get all set up for that. First, let's learn everything we can learn about it. I'm going to big wheel over to my nearest. So this is going to show me all those near airports and I can get information that way. Well, that's one way to do it. But if I know I'm just going to go direct, I'm going to set my direct course to Kilo, Golf, Yankee, Yankee. Watch again how I did that. So clear all the way back to my main page. I'm looking at my nearest page, and I simply cursor down to Kilo, Golf, Yankee, Yankee, and then I go direct to there. If that is where I want to go, I need to get the cursor, select Activate, and Enter. And sure enough, I hold this to go back to my main page, and there is my course to Kilo Golf Yankee Yankee. It is a heading of 052, so I'm going to set that here in my VOR1. 052 will be my course there. Uh, at the Tower and Airport, we also need to get the weather information, so here's how we do that. I'm going to go down to the Garmin 430 now. This is my COM2 or my NAV2 radio. I'm going to basically go over to Waypoint. I can get a little information if I punch it in here. The other way I could do it is by going over to the nearest. Let me show you another way. Push to get the cursor and enter Kilo Golf Yankee Yankee. It takes just a little bit of time. Kind of like it does in real life. This is probably one of the most time consuming things that you can do when programming your cockpit, and that's why I always recommend you do it on the ground. Yankee. Oh, come on. Oh, I just had it. There. Kilo Golf Yankee Yankee. Great. Alright, so I got all that programmed in. Now that I've got that waypoint, I can switch between the pages of this chapter by using the small wheel. Tell me everything about those frequencies. Hey, there it is. Kilo Golf Yankee Yankee. I want to know what the ATIS frequency is. So I'm going to cursor, big wheel down, 
and the hiatus should be 125.6. It's not telling me there, but check this out. I can program this in here just by selecting it and pushing enter. 125.6. Let's listen to it now, just for fun. So, I should hear it on COM2. Oh no, I've screwed up. I want the, uh, I want the ATIS. Should be 13457. Where is that? There it is, that's what I wanted. Okay. Now I should hear. Carry airport information. Uh, golf. Information visibility. golf. Flight 241 at 8. Visibility 3. Sky condition. View clouds at 1,100 feet. View clouds at 4,200 feet. View clouds at 12,300 feet. Okay. Temperature 25. 2.10. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 3. 2 decimal. ILS nine runway 30 is Landing and departing runway 30. They're using runway 30. Okay, we have information golf. I'll take that out. Um, I made a mistake here. I meant to put in uh, Gary Atis, and I accidentally put in Gary Tower. So I'm going to put Gary Tower in up here. One, two, five, decimal six. This is just part of setting up all these frequencies that you're going to need. So here I have the Lansing traffic. One, two, two, decimal seven. That's the CTAF, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. And here is the uh, Gary Tower, where I'm going. It's also going to be helpful to have the ground frequency that I'm going to need. Almost all ground frequencies begin with 121, and in this case it's 121.19. Let's see if that's actually in here. I'll scroll down to see if it says where the ground is. Yeah, it's supposed to say Gary Ground there, 121.19. Okay, hold that to clear. I've got all my frequencies set. Let's get ready to take off and head over to Gary. Alright, so parking brake off. Flaps are up. Normally I would do this when we're not sitting on a runway, but this is for practice. Make our radio call. Lansing traffic, Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra, departing runway 27, east departure. If you want to do this in the sim, you can have it say the same thing up here. You're going to scroll down and broadcasting on 122.7, you're going to announce a VFR departure to the east. Kilo India Golf, Quebec traffic, Cessna Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, taking off runway 27, departure to the east. Alright, I'm on that right foot again. My engine instruments are in the green. I'm tracking the center line. RPM reads 2300, that's a good sign. If it reads anything less than that at full power, it might mean, mean that I need to abort my takeoff. I'm going to rotate at 55 knots, just like the pilot's operating handbook says. Here's 55, gentle rotate and climb out between 70 knots and 80 knots. Again, I'm using the cowling straight ahead of me. I basically put that straight on the horizon, and that should give me the appropriate uh, climb attitude. I'm using my trim again. That's what you just saw, that little blip. And I'm going to trim for 80 knots. So I can, in theory, take my hand totally off the stick. I've trimmed off my pressures, and I'm making very smooth and small adjustments to my, to my flight plan do this right, flying should be very uh, very zen in a way, just uh, very actively passive where you're monitoring and making small changes. Here comes 500 feet above ground level. Do just a little bit of time compression. Alright, here is 300 feet below pattern altitude. Let's turn left crosswind. Clear my left, clear my right. Nobody out there. Let's turn. Because I have the plane trimmed for 80 knots, it's very easy to make this turn. I don't have to make a lot of input. Just a little turn to the left. And here we are at pattern altitude, 1600 feet. Time to turn downwind. Make my radio call. Lansing traffic, Skyhawk X-ray Golf Sierra. Departing downwind, runway 27, Lansing. Some pilots here, uh, you'll hear them on the radio in real life saying, this is my last call. That is not a required radio call. Um, in fact, it shows evidence that maybe they haven't been trained correctly. Uh, or maybe they think that's you know information that people on the frequency really need. It's not particularly actionable information. I don't I don't need to know that this is going to be your last call on the frequency. So I think we can, uh, as pilots, we can avoid saying that. 
All right, so I'm going to do two things here. One, I'm going to keep on the tra common traffic advisory frequency. So I'm going to listen to that 1227. And I'm also going to listen to Gary Adis one more time. Gary Airport information, Golf 1800. Okay, I just confirmed that I still have information, Golf. That's the most recent information over at Gary. Now, I'm almost ready to switch over to tower. To switch over to the tower frequency, I'm just going to announce my position. I'm just south of Lansing Airport, or in this case, I'm about, oh, I don't know, 7.8 miles southwest of Gary. Altitude indicates 2,000 feet. I'm going to say I'm inbound to land. So now that I'm almost clear of Lansing airspace, I need to call Gary to tell them that I'm on my way over. So let's switch over to tower frequency now, 125.6. Say Gary Tower, Skyhawk X-ray Golf Sierra, about seven miles southwest, inbound to land with information golf. If you want to do that on the sim, here's how you do it. To nearest airport, Gary, and I'm going to request a full stop landing. Gary Tower, Cessna Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra is seven miles southwest with golf to land. Okay, so they said make left traffic runway 30. That means I'm going to fly the traffic pattern for runway 30. That's no problem. I've already bugged runway 30 right here so I can use uh, my situational awareness to kind of picture how I'm going to enter that runway. If you look up ahead, you can barely see the airport down there, and I'm going to try to enter at a 45 degree entry at uh, midfield downwind runway 30. All right, let's fast forward so I can get there. Oops, I made a mistake. I didn't tell him that I acknowledged his instructions. Let's acknowledge his instructions. Fly left traffic runway tree zero Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra. And that's pretty typical. If they don't hear what they need to hear, air traffic control will basically ask you like, hey, uh, Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra, did you hear what I said? And uh, if you make that same mistake that I did, They'll, uh, they'll query you until uh, they get what you need. So, in real life uh, pilot training, don't be afraid to ask uh, controllers for clarification. And they'll do the same of you if they don't get that information that they need. Okay, so here we are coming into Gary. I know the airport elevation of Gary is about 600 feet because it's pretty much parallel to the airport that I just uh, took off of, which is about 600 feet. That puts the pattern altitude at about 1600 feet MSL. So here I am at 2300. I'm going to descend down to 2000. Correction, I'm going to descend to 1600. Time to start throttling back. I'll throttle back to 2100, which is our pattern uh, airspeed. It gives me 90 knots. And you can see I'm cutting in at basically midfield runway 36. Time to start turning downwind. This is just like the VFR traffic pattern except we had to get a tower clearance before we landed. A little high, I want to be at two, uh, 1,600 here on downwind. And now, unlike the untowered airport, Gary Tower, who's inside that tower right there, they're going to clear me to land runway Three zero. I don't have to request it or anything. I already did that on my initial contact when I told them I'm inbound to land. So let's see. They usually call you right as you cross the numbers. Let's see if we get a uh, landing clearance. Golf, Sierra, cleared to land runway three zero. And there it is. Cleared to land runway three zero. Except this time, I'll actually tell them I'm cleared to land. Cleared to land runway three zero Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra. And uh, the way that the sim just repeated that is exactly how I would repeat it in real life. Cleared to land, runway 30, Cessna, X-ray, Golf Sierra. I'm a little fast here. I'm supposed to be at 80 knots. Let's see where my runway is. Oh, this is going to be a tight pattern. A little tighter than normal, so I'm going to put 20 degrees flaps down. The whole reason for this tight pattern is I kind of started my downwind a little too close to the runway. 
you're inevitably going to make mistakes with flying. That's okay. It's uh, the ability to correct from those mistakes. Now look over there. We've got the precision approach path indicator, the PAPI. You can see I've got two white lights and two red lights. That is your target. I'm looking at those four lights right there. And then look on the runway. You see you've got all those arrows pointing forward. That is called a displaced threshold. You're not allowed to land on that displaced threshold. You need to land past that displaced threshold. And my uh, target point is basically those thousand foot markers right there. Okay, I'm still a little fast, but I've got a nice long runway. Let's put in the rest of my flaps. I'm going to hover it about two feet above the runway. Start to put back pressure because I don't want to land on the nose wheel. I want to land on the mains. Hold it off. Feet are coming alive. Starting to track that center line. Flying brakes, brakes as necessary. Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra exit runway when able. All right, exit runway when able. Don't have to respond to that necessarily because I'm busy flying to the plane. Uh oh, somebody put a taxi light right in the middle of that taxiway. Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra contact ground on one two one decimal niner. Okay, time to contact ground one two one decimal niner. Let me tell him that I heard him that. That I heard that. One two one decimal niner Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra. Simple as that. So now I've already got that ground frequency pre-programmed. -program one two one decimal niner. Flip it up. Switch over to COM two. Turn off COM one. That's not working. Oh, here's what I gotta do. Broadcast on COM two. Easy. And this is where I would say, okay, Gary Ground, Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra, like the taxi to parking. But first, gotta clean up the airplane. Flaps up. Reset the trim. If I needed to do anything else, like turn off my lights, this would be the time to do it. And let's give him a call. Gary Ground, Cessna Alpha Sierra X Ray Golf Sierra, request taxi to parking. Cessna Alpha Sierra X Ray Golf Sierra Taxi to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Alpha Charlie Cross Runway 30 Charlie Delta Cross Runway 12 Delta. Alright, that's quite a taxi clearance. So basically, X Ray Golf Sierra Taxi to GA Parking via Alpha Delta across those runways. If I needed to do that in real life, that's exactly what I'd do. Taxi it sure to helps General to Aviation write it down. Parking using Taxiway Alpha Charlie Cross Runway 30 Charlie Delta Cross Runway 12 Delta Cessna X Ray Golf Sierra. Well, that should be enough to keep us busy for today. Fellow pilots, let me know how this works for you, and uh, I hope you find these vi videos helpful as you are doing your real-life training. See you soon, and fly safely.